The sun's out, it's either unbearably hot or it's raining. That must mean it's summer, so let's talk about summer photography. It's your Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and every week, each and every Tuesday, we bring a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week, we are going to be talking about summer photography, and we're going to go through three tips to actually get better summer photos. Now, these are not going to be the kind of normal tips that you might see from even people like me. I've said these, these kind of tips a bunch of times before. We're going to do new tips today, fresh tips. Now, the kind of tips you might have seen before, things like shoot at sunset or sunrise to get the best light, that's true. That's definitely true. That's a great tip, actually. Yeah, but if you're starting out, that's the kind of thing you need to hear. Go out at sunset, go out at sunrise, you're going to get beautiful tones in the sky, beautiful colours, beautiful, softer light. It's going to be great for landscapes, portraits, loads and loads of stuff. That's always a great tip to go out at those times, you know, to look for colour. There's loads of nice flowers out, there's lots of colour all around, all that kind of stuff. But we are going to talk about three different tips that you can use right now to get better summer photos. Let's get into it. Tip number one is to shoot at all times of day. So contrary to the kind of popular thing of go out and shoot at sunset, shoot at sunrise, let's shoot at all times of day. Now, this was something that really affected me for a long time. We've actually got a full video all about, in fact, it was a tutorial Tuesday we did last year, all about why you should go out and shoot in the midday sun. And the reason for that is it is such a large part of these summer days. And this is something that affected my photography for years. You know, I wouldn't go out in the summer in the daytime to take photos because I thought, well, you know, it's harsh sunlight. I don't want to have to deal with that. I'm not going to like the photos that I'm going to get. So I'm just going to avoid it. I'm going to go out only at sunrise, which is very early at this time of year. So I tend to avoid that. So just at sunset then. Now, the problem with that is it's very late in the day. You know, it could be 9 p.m., half nine, something like that. You know, you might have other things going on. It's a very limited window. What if there's some clouds at sunset? It also means that you are wasting a huge amount of the day not taking photos, which is kind of ridiculous. So absolutely go out at all times of day because there's always stuff to shoot. Now, what can you shoot in that harsh midday sound? Well, first of all, you don't have to go outside. You could play around with some product photography, which is incredibly creative and interesting. There's lots you can do with that. With maybe some food photography, maybe even shoot in the garden with some cocktails or some garden food or a barbecue or something like that. You could go and shoot flowers in the shade. There's a lot that you can do without really even having to go out in that midday sun. But if you do want to go out, there's loads to shoot out there as well. And there's lots of ways to combat the midday sun. First of all, you can head to a shaded area. So whether that be a forest where you're shooting, you know, with that dappled light coming through the leaves, that looks beautiful. And actually this time of year is perfect for that. You get very strong sunlight, which is being stopped by all the leaves and all that sort of stuff. So you get these little spots, a little bit like I've got on me now, I've got some spots of light kind of dotted around and that can make for a really interesting looking portrait or a landscape, you know, within the forest, anything like that, that can look fantastic. You could go out and do it in an urban environment where you've got some shade. You could go out and just find areas that you could do something like a portrait, maybe street photography, something like that in the shade, so out of that harsh midday sun. But also you can lean into that harsh midday sun and get some great, very high contrast photos. There's a few different ways you can do this. I like to put mine into black and white to really emphasize the harshness of the shadows and really go for it with that kind of stuff. That works really well for cityscape, maybe for street photography, even for stuff like portraiture, you can go out and do that. If you find a place with nice white flooring or white walls or anything that you can bounce light off, that's gonna help to fill in some of those shadows and soften them out a little bit. So that's kind of a pro tip for when you're out and about in the city or something like that, to find somewhere where you can reflect the light but there's always going to be something to shoot you go and do macro photography in the woods in the city wherever it is there's always going to be something to shoot so the main tip there is just to get out there and shoot something because you're probably always going to come away either with at least one or two good photos or having learned something about how you could capture a better photo next time and that's just as valuable and that kind of you know what we're gonna do a bonus tip right now we're gonna go in with don't be afraid to fail because the reason I didn't used to go out so much in the summer, especially in the day, was because I knew I wouldn't like the photos I came back with. But what if I did? What if I was able to do some of these things we've just been talking about and I like some of the photos? Well, if I hadn't been so concerned about the results I was gonna get, I would have gone out, I would have learned this stuff much earlier and I would have improved as a photographer. You know, all these things are obstacles to overcome as opposed to barriers to stop you doing it at all. So don't be afraid to fail. Go out, try stuff, 
it doesn't matter if it doesn't work. You tried it, you grew as a photographer, you got better, and you'll be surprised what you can learn with one genre that bleeds over to another genre. I learned a lot from portrait photography about how to photograph cars, products, food, all kinds of stuff. It bleeds over one into another. Tip number two is one that I suggest for all times of year, but certainly summer as well, and that's to identify the subject within your photo. It sounds super obvious, right? But I've certainly been guilty of not doing it, and I know it's something that can just bring a photo down a little bit, especially this time of year if you're out on nice walks and stuff like that you can often find a lovely view, but a lovely view doesn't necessarily mean a lovely photograph. You need to identify a subject within the frame. Now, for portraiture, that's super easy, it's the person, but for landscape, for street photography, anything like that, finding an anchor point within the image that works as both the subject and the natural resting place for the viewer's eye just takes that image up to a new level. You know, that's an important aspect of any image and just the act of thinking about what is the subject is going to bring the quality of that photo up. It forces you to compose the photo in a certain way, it forces you to look at it and work out what the photo is about and it forces you to take a better photo. So just identifying a subject within the frame, no matter what genre of photography it is, and making sure that that is the anchor point, making sure the photo is composed around that subject. Maybe you then are framing that subject a little bit with other things in the frame, with foreground, with stuff like that. Maybe, for example, in this photo, you know, it's a lovely area. There's lots of nice light because it was sunset, shooting at the right time, but I'm looking for a subject. I've got kind of this nice, kind of wheaty looking grass, long grass in the foreground, which is really lovely as a foreground element. I'm gonna blur that out, have that all nice and blurred in the foreground. You know, the, the sky is looking really nice, the light is looking really nice. And I ended up picking out this path that sort of cuts its way through the landscape as a subject. So I ended up centering that up, you know, with everything off to the sides and the foreground here and the sky as the backdrop. And that works really well as the subject. Here I use my dog because, you know, she was out with me while we were walking around taking photos and she works as a great subject for kind of a portrait. But you don't have to take a portrait of a person for them to be the subject of the photo. You can use a person or your dog or whatever it might be to actually add that in to the frame to create a subject in what would otherwise have just been sort of a nice view. So this photo, for example, I asked Matilda to go and stand over on those rocks so it became more of an adventure photo. The rocks looked really good, the sky looked really good, the light was lovely, but I needed a subject. So Matilda went over there, perfect. That just sort of added to that photo and elevates it to the next level. Tip number three is to vary up your shots with different filters. Now, one way to get over the incredibly harsh sunlight and the just blaring sky is to use something like a polarizing filter. It's actually incredibly awesome to go out and use something like that for your landscape photography at this time of year. It darkens the sky, gives you really nice looking photos, especially if there's a few clouds dotted on that blue sky. Oh, that looks so, so good. But even something like an ND filter can just get an interesting photo, you know, a nice long exposure of some water or some clouds moving through the sky, or really even traffic in an urban environment. It's a really interesting way to take some different photos and it forces you to kind of vary up the kinds of photos that you're getting. A little while ago, we did kind of some videos about what is an ND filter, what is a circular polarizing filter. Hoya sent us some different filters to try out and it really kind of reminded me how much I love using that stuff and I hadn't done it for a while. And this time of year is a nice time to go out and do that. You know, a nice sunset photo over the water with a nice long exposure can look fantastic. And it's a different type of photo to go out and get. Now those are three tips which hopefully are different to other tips you might have heard on YouTube already about how to conquer summer photography, but I would love to hear your tips as well. If you have any other tips about how to conquer summer photography, let me know down in the comments because I'd love to hear that. Absolutely, I love all the comments you guys leave. And I just want you to know, even if I don't reply straight away, I read every single comment you guys leave and I really, really appreciate all your kind words. We've got a really, really lovely community actually and you guys leave some really interesting insights and also just kind words as well, which I always really appreciate. You can check out a bunch of the kit that we use for these photos down in the description, so you can check out all the links. Don't forget to like and subscribe as well, so you can catch up on all the latest content all the time. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.